Hey guys, so I kind of want to start from beginning to finish and, and take you through the process of our first microgreen grow, what we learned, what we did, what worked, what didn't, what we want to change. Um, the still image you see here is the very first step that we did. We went to a home improvement store and just bought seedling starter kits, which each of them came with a flat, which we will need the kit later when we start the seedlings for our actual garden. So here um, what we did is there's just four ounces of water and a seedling flat. It does not have holes. One thing that I have seen in a lot of videos that I have learned from, but a lot of microgreen growers, most of them actually, will say that you need a seedling flat with drainage holes and then you'll need to sit it inside one of these without drainage holes. We didn't do that. We put four ounces of water in a flat straight like this. And what you'll see in the next still is that we just added our seedling mixed soil right in with the water. Um, I liked it a lot. I liked, I liked how it retained the moisture, how it initially didn't, you know, make the seeds feel watered down. I've seen people put the soil mix straight in the flat, get a hose out and water it down, which works for them and that's great. Um, I'm a little particular, so I, I would have rather, I'd rather do this. It's a lot cleaner. Um, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. Our next step was to add the seedling starter mix directly on top of the four ounces of water. This is an organic mix here. It's got, um, obviously it's seedling potting soil mixed with coconut core. One thing I like about microgreens so far is that the soil that you have doesn't have to be the most nutritious stuff in the world. Um, it is, I mean, soil needs to be nutrient rich for to grow anything. But microgreens don't grow long enough to really need a ton of nutrients. So that's where coconut core is a great option, especially if you're looking to be money saving or on a budget. It really just adds to the amount of your soil and it's not expensive. And it's awesome to use because it doesn't have any nutritious property values. But, you know, so say you buy a, a bag of potting mix and you buy a brick of coconut core, mix those things together in a tub and you're going to have twice as much soil when they're added together than you would if you just used a bag of potting mix. And the um, water retention properties of coconut core are awesome, which is why this works without drainage holes because you can just put your water and your soil right on top. Once we put the soil on top, um, we just took, I just took my hand and tried to even it out. You really need an even surface to help with germination for these micros. And uh, I did kind of screen it before I put it on here. As I was taking it out, I used a garden trough and as I was taking it out, I saw some big chunks. So just, uh, with a little sifter, I screened and I, I found some bigger pieces, which I wasn't thrilled about, but you're going to have that in anything that's produced commercially. But overall, um, like so far, everything was, was looking good. These are just some of the big chunks that I found in the soil. There was a rock in there too, but like I said, I could just sift them out and then it was fine, finely graded, ready for germination. So the seed I used, I got from Johnny's, um, all non-GMO stuff. This is the mild micromix, the brassica variety. I've alluded to this previously. There was kale, mizuna, cabbage, and kohlrabi in here. I'll talk about this when we get to the end, too, when I show you the harvest. It's a lot more spicy than I thought. Not, And I'm not one of those people that thinks things are hot when they're not. Um, it was just a lot. It had a lot more kick than I expected it to. But I was really impressed with the seed. I used the whole packet in the flat, which next time I don't think I would. I think I would measure it out better, maybe two tablespoons worth, because I felt like they got kind of crowded and they didn't grow to be as big um, as I'd liked. But overall, I'm really pleased with the seeds. Next step before adding the seeds um, was just to spray the top of the soil down to give the seeds something to stick to so that when I 
trickled the seeds on there from the packet. They didn't bounce all around and fall out of the flat. So we just sprayed it down till it was covered. And then I just sprinkled the seeds on the flat. I just, I kept them in the package and I just tapped it. I've seen some hacks that I'd like to try eventually, which were like putting your seeds in an empty herb, like a McCormick container where it has the holes, which is really cool. So I'd like to try that. Um, just tried to give it even coverage. There were obviously a few spots where I felt like it were heavier than others, like in this still and the bottom left-hand corner and stuff like that. But overall, um, other than using too much seed, I think it, it covered this top of the soil really well. You can see here that they're very small seeds. And uh, I would have rather this first go around like we did had too much seed than not enough. And this part was fun. I, just the actual getting started, putting the seeds on there. The soil was wet, so as soon as I trickled them on, they didn't bounce too much. They had something to stick to, and it covered very well. We kind of started from one corner and just made our way up and down the flat. So after we got the seeds onto the soil, we just gave them a good spray again. Just like we did before we put them on, we got the spray bottle and sprayed down the soil to give them something to stick to. After that, once they were on there, we gave them a nice spray again just to get the process going to get the moisture. Because when you put the other flat on top to mimic the seeds being under soil, which they kind of call a blackout period, the moisture there, it kind of just creates the humidity to help the germination because when we would take the top off to spray them, the top dome would be drenched with water just from the humidity staying in there. So we got a piece of what we made our shelving out of, just an extra cut, so we didn't spend anything additional on this piece, but we just laid it. It was the length of the flat, it wasn't the width, but we just laid it on top of the seeds and then, as you can see here, I just gave it a light tap with my fingertips to kind of press, gently press the seeds. Not, not anything to pack them down, but just to get them into better contact with the soil for germination. We did it on both sides. And then right from there, we put the other flat on top and started the three to five day blackout process, which is when I started to kind of get insecure. Um, the beginning of this grow was very, like I did a lot of research about it. I knew how much water I needed. I knew what kind of soil I wanted and, and how to spray it down and how to tap it. I, I got all those tips from other YouTubers' videos, so thank you guys for that. But when it came to actually trying to germinate the seeds, I don't know why. I think it was just the first time I've done it, so I got kind of nervous that it wasn't going to work. Um, but it was kind of exciting at the same time, so... We, we put the blackout dome on. It's in our basement. I had a little thermometer down there. The temperature stayed a pretty steady between like 65 and 70. Humidity was always in the mid to low 30s. So the temperature range was optimal. It was good. Um, what we did not have with these that I do wish that we would have got are... Um, seedling heating mats. I bought some for the radishes that we have down there now. But I think if I would have had a heating mat to heat up the seedlings, they would have germinated a little quicker. I think these took to actually germinate. I think they took three to four days, which for this mix could be appropriate. I, I haven't done it enough to know. The radishes we have down there now germinated in like two freaking days, but from what I'm reading, radishes just... I mean, I guess I knew that. I've grown radishes in my garden and I plant them, and in like two days, they're, they're up already. So I guess I should have known that. But um, yeah, this was the start. So um, we put them under the dome, and I tried to come back every half day to take the lid off so, um, and just spray them just to see if anything. For me, it was kind of like seeing if Santa came because you would take it off, and you'd, you'd look at them, and you'd, you'd spray them and give them a good water and put them back under there. This is kind of a 24-hour difference to see the germination. I had to do this because I was convinced that nothing happened. But um, the top picture is the picture of right after we put the seeds on the flat before we put the dome on. Um, and you can see as you're getting to the end of the first 24 hours, you can tell they're starting to germinate. They're turning kind of an orangey color, which is you know, are the seeds starting to sprout, which at the time I couldn't tell the difference. I was... 
I was looking at them, I'm like, they're the same color. But when you look at it through this view, you can vividly see after 24 hours, the seeds are starting to germinate. They're almost a reddish orange. Um, so that was really cool to see and really exciting to kind of put it side by side. This was the hardest part for me was waiting for them to actually sprout to know that it was working. Um, I should have had a little more confidence, but um, this was this was exciting. And this is the same stage of that, just in a closer view. You can see in the um, upper left the moisture from taking the dome off. It just collects like that, but you can see germination starting. The seeds are expanding. They're getting ready to sprout. Um, this was a really cool time. And then came some exciting stuff. The top picture is the end of the second 24 hours. You could start to see small shoots. And then by the end of the third day, the germination process just kind of took off. They came up. They were yellow like they're supposed to be. They're always yellow until they get under light. That's when they start to green up. So they sprouted right up. It took three days. This is another... Um, another shot from the third day and this is when I started to get really excited I could kind of tell at this stage how full not not completely but how full the flat was going to be where there were some empty gaps and stuff like that so this is where my confidence started to pick up I was seeing germination I was seeing progress and it was a really exciting thing just to know that you're growing your own stuff and it's actually working um, so this was really really cool I just really like seeing these all side by side. I'm a very visual person, um, hands-on, so being able to see it in a four-photoed grid like this really helped show just how quick these things germinate and grow. So that's day one, day two, day three, day four, and that's after those days have completed. So that last picture is at the end of day four. And um, by that, they were ready to go under the light to green up and just grow for the rest of the time. So I've talked a little about our light source before. It's a full spectrum, red side of the spectrum, LED grow light. We got two of them. And they did really well with these micros. They, they don't produce a lot of heat. I didn't go closer. I know that um, maybe the distance we had, I mean, we were probably about a foot away, maybe even more from the flat. But most of that stems from the fact that our lights are like 10 by 10 squares. They're not very long, so they didn't cover the whole flat, which accounted for why the edges of our flats kind of grew at an angle to kind of meet the light. But that's why I didn't have them close, because the closer I got to the microgreens, the less amount of the flat that was covered with the light. So I kind of had to keep them higher than I would have liked to. But overall, they did really well. Um, we haven't got our electric bill yet since I've run them, so I can't give any data um, on account of that. But efficiency-wise, I mean, they don't get hot. I ran them 24 hours. Um, these micros did not get a break from the lighting. If I was using a blue spectrum, like a fluorescent, like a T8 bulb, I would have probably done 12 to 18 hours a day and then the rest off. But with the grow rate and, 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 and that of these... LEDs I decided to just keep them running all the time and here's just a photo of them greening up so they were yellow and then um, after a day or two under the light they started to green up at the beginning at germination I was very meticulous with what day it is and I would chart you know what they looked like when they sprouted and then once they got under the grow light and I knew they were growing and greening up I just lost all sense of what day it was for them and I kept track of it on a calendar kind of so I would say this one is around day six or seven, maybe a week in from germination and putting the seeds on. But um, yeah, they greened up really well. The funky angle of them is, like I said, them pulling towards the light. But I'm very impressed with the light source. I was nervous um, because we got them and then I started reading more about microgreens and everyone's using the fluorescent lights or, you know, they don't. Red spectrums, I read, I've read i read better for like fruiting, like tomato um, or stuff like that, but it, it looked very good.
And then to harvest them, I just had some Fisker's um, pruning shears. They were straight edge. And I just kind of pulled them over and cut them off. I made sure not to pull because I didn't want to get any soil on them. I cut them. I left like a centimeter left in the tray. You don't want to get soil on them because you don't want to have to wash them. You prolong their, um, their shelf life by like, you know, even three to five days in some cases if you don't have to rinse them. And the way they were harvested, I did not have to rinse them. So I got a pretty good yield. This is a good size strainer, and I filled almost the whole thing with the micros. They're kind of small. The leaves aren't very big. I, I know that. Um, but the last few days of them under the light, they just weren't. I just think I put too many, too much seed. Just like in a garden, when you plant too thick, things don't grow to their optimal size. So I think that's what happened here. Could have let them go a few more days. They would have gotten a little bigger, but I don't think that it would have made a huge difference. So overall, I'm very happy with how this went. I'm very excited to buy and try different varieties. I think up next, we have radishes going now. Some of the seeds are kind of old though, so they didn't germ germinate the best. So I don't have, I won't get a huge yield from those, but um, I want to try some, some beet seeds, um, broccoli for sure. I've heard good things about broccoli microgreens. So we're excited. This went, re went really well. We had a lot of fun. Um, here they are. That's how they're going to be stored in the fridge. I wrote the date on there. And that's an entire um, freezer bag full, which is the only bags that I had. But, um, yeah, so it went, went really well. We're very excited. And if this is your thing, give us a like um, on the video and subscribe and see what we're up to next. See you guys.